A young woman named Amelia was in a desperate sprint, fleeing from a relentless group of pursuers. Don't stop running, Amelia, a voice urged, seeming to emanate from her own silvery hair. I know, but I'm reaching my limit, Amelia responded, her breath ragged. Amelia was a striking half-elf, her beauty accentuated by her delicate, thin frame and fair skin. Her long, straight silver hair cascaded down to her hips, framing her face with two front strands. A white rose adorned with a thin purple ribbon was tucked on the right side of her hair, and a butterfly-shaped brooch nestled in her bangs on the left. Her eyes, a captivating shade of bluish purple, were accentuated by her black eyelashes and pointed blue pupils. She was dressed in a white and purple ensemble, complemented by a necklace with a green crystal pendant. If they catch you, they won't hesitate to kill you. You must keep running, the voice comma, belonging to Puck, warned Amelia, who nodded in understanding. Amelia continued her frantic escape until she reached a dense part of the forest. Using the thick vegetation as a cover, she managed to hide. Her pursuers ran past her hiding spot, giving Amelia a brief respite. It seems we've managed to lose them for now, Amelia said, panting heavily. Don't let your guard down, Amelia. They won't stop until they've captured you, Puck cautioned. Why are they after me? I've told them time and again that I'm not Satala, yet they persist, Amelia lamented. They're convinced that sacrificing you will resurrect the Witch of Jealousy. They won't stop at anything to capture you, Puck explained gravely. My appearance? It's a curse, Amelia murmured sadly. That's not true, Amelia. And if things get too dangerous I'll step in, Puck reassured her. Amelia managed a small smile at Puck's words and wiped away her tears. Thank you, she whispered. However their moment of respite was short-lived. A man with short dark green hair and gray eyes, dressed in a black, green, and red suit, discovered their hiding spot. I finally found you, Sadala-sama. He shouted. I'm not Sadala. How many times do I have to say it? Amelia retorted. Oh, Sadala-sama, it's such a tragedy that you're trapped in this girl's body. But don't worry. Once we extract her soul, you can return to us. I, Petaljuice Ramani Kanti, swear it. Petaljuice proclaimed, his arms outstretched, and tears streaming down his face. Seeing an opportunity, Amelia started running again. Petaljuice didn't follow her, which she found odd. She glanced back and saw black hands reaching out for her. Fear gripped her, and she closed her eyes. Amelia, look ahead. Puck screamed. Hey! Was all Amelia could manage before realizing the cliff looming in front of her. She didn't even have time to scream as she fell. Luckily, the branches of a tree cushioned her fall but it was still painful. Ugh. It's a miracle I didn't die, Amelia muttered, looking up from where she had fallen. There's no time to relax, Amelia, you have to. Puck's words were cut off as Petaljuice appeared behind them. Do you think you could escape from me? Petaljuice taunted. How is this possible? Amelia exclaimed in surprise. Don't be surprised, girl. It's all thanks to Sadala-sama's love for me, Petaljuice said, a deranged smile on his face. Damn. Amelia is cornered and at this rate, they'll surely kill her, but I can't do anything, Puck thought helplessly, just when all seemed lost, something began to happen in the sky above them, sparks flickered, drawing Amelia and Petaljuice's attention to the darkening sky, black clouds swirled into a single point, and a hole began to form in the sky, right above Amelia, she watched in astonishment and fear as the hole emitted a powerful light and a huge tornado formed, Amelia clung to a nearby tree, but the tornado's pull grew stronger, she didn't have much strength left and was soon sucked into the tornado. Petaljuice, using all his dark hands, barely managed to hold on. He watched as Amelia was swallowed by the hole and cried out in pain, Sadala-sama. Puck immediately realized that the hole was a portal to another world. As a spirit of this world, he couldn't follow Amelia. Amelia, Puck said in a resigned tone. Puck, what's happening? Where is this taking us? Amelia asked, confused and scared. Amelia. I can. I don't understand, Puck. Why are you saying that? Amelia screamed through her tears. Don't worry. I won't abandon you. I'll just become your strength so that wherever you go, you can protect yourself with your new power. That's why this is a farewell forever. Amelia, Puck said as he turned into light and surrounded Amelia. Amelia, who didn't understand anything, could only scream in a sad and heartbreaking voice, Puck, as the hole closed with her inside. When Amelia woke up, she found herself in a simple room, in a strange bed, unsure of what had happened, or how long she had been asleep. As Amelia pondered her situation, a girl with long dark blue hair entered the room. Seeing Amelia awake, 
The girl dropped the water tank she was carrying in surprise and ran to Amelia. Oni-chan, you're finally awake! A girl exclaimed, her face lighting up with joy upon seeing Amelia stir. Who are you? And where am I? Amelia asked, her gaze shifting between the girl and her unfamiliar surroundings. My name is Wendy Marvell, and this is the Kate Shelter, a guild of magicians, Wendy replied. A guild of magicians? Kate Shelter? I've never heard of it. Amelia confessed, her brows furrowing in confusion. We're a small guild. It's not surprising that you haven't heard of us, Wendy admitted, a hint of sadness in her voice. Amelia fell silent, her mind racing as she recalled Puck's words about a new world. Hey Wendy, what's the name of this world? She asked. Wendy looked puzzled by the question, but answered nonetheless. This world is called Earthland. Why do you ask? Amelia repeated the name under her breath, Earthland, 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 her voice trailing off as she tried to make sense of her situation. By the way, what's your name? Wendy asked, pulling Amelia out of her thoughts. Oh of course, I haven't told you yet, my name is Amelia. It's nice to meet you, Wendy, Amelia replied, offering Wendy a warm smile. Upon hearing Amelia's name, Wendy nodded and asked shyly, can I call you Amelia? Amelia couldn't help but smile at Wendy's timid request. Of course, then I'll call you Wendy Chan, she responded. Wendy's face lit up with happiness, and the two spent a pleasant time chatting. Eventually, Amelia shared her story with the guildmaster, recounting everything that had happened until she ended up here. Both Wendy and the guildmaster accepted Amelia without question, and she became a member of the Kate Shelter Guild. Little did she know, a fateful encounter awaited her in this new world, one that would forever change her life and destiny.